On April 23rd, 2012, WWF Laos country director accepted the handover of three underwater PSAT tags funded by the U.S. Embassy in Laos. The project's goal is to learn more about the giant Mekong catfish, a truly mysterious beast of the Mekong. Because trapping of the giant fish is rare and illegal, this migration season we will test these tags on the smaller Kremps catfish, or Pangasius Kremphi. Si Pandone, or 4,000 Islands, is a 17-kilometer wide stretch of the Mekong. The area is important to Laos and Cambodia for its productive fishery, riverside gardens, and more recently, tourism potential. The Mekong is the lifeblood of the region. Over 60 million people rely on it as their main source of protein, for its rich alluvial riverside soil, for water and sanitation, and for spiritual and cultural traditions. Villages like Don Sahom rely on wild-caught fisheries as their main source of income and subsistence. In June and July, when the rains come and the waters of the Mekong rise, the migratory species of the Mekong begin their long and arduous journey up to their ancestral spawning grounds. My name is Vic Carling. I work for WWF in Laos, and one of my one of my important species is the Mekong giant catfish, uh, and we're trying to understand more about its way of life because it really is a poorly understood species. We do know that they can get up to 300 kilograms in weight, can be more than three meters in length, so they're a really big fish. They're vegetarian, which is unusual for a, a fish of that size, uh, and we, there are many things that we do not understand about the way it lives. We don't exactly know where it spawns, we don't exactly know where it feeds to become so big. Um, we're not sure about which times of the year it travels through which parts of the river. And without knowing that information, it's much more difficult for us to take practical action to conserve it. <clears throat> Our mission is to nurse a recently caught Kremps catfish back to good health transport it across the island to the top of the rapids and the traps, and tag it with a self-releasing PSAT tag designed to record fish location and depth underwater using light levels and electromagnetic field measurements. The tag is programmed to release from the fish and float to the surface after a pre-programmed length of time, in our case, a few months. We wait on the beach with our transport and tagging equipment ready for the perfect fish to be caught. Village fishers build these lee traps in the dry season, designed to trap migratory fish that are too weak to make it all the way up the rapid in one go. As the fish fall back to rest, they are swept up onto the bamboo ramp. Fishers camp alongside or even on top of their traps. Some navigate the rough water in boats, others balance in thin bamboo walkways above deadly rapids to reach their traps. As the stressed, exhausted, suffocating fish are brought back from the trap, we try to bring the fish back to health in an aerated pool. This proved to be a challenge. The fish were clearly very vulnerable during this energy-intensive migratory effort. We loaded the healthiest fish into a local tractor and transported it up the island, above the rapids and traps, in order to increase its chances of a long-distance migration upstream. Here we demo the tag device on a recently deceased fish. The tag is outfitted with a solar panel, a computer, a float, a transmitter, and a small explosive device that will detach the tag from the fish after the pre-programmed time has elapsed. So right now there's, there's uh, one fish still out there swimming up the river with the tag attached. The tag is programmed so that in early October it will automatically release itself, float to the surface of the river and then begin to transmit to the satellite. Each tag has got uh, a telephone number in Lao, Cambodian and Thai languages so that should someone actually find the tag 
uh, they can get in touch with us, we'll give them a reward for returning it, and then we're guaranteed to get the data. If we can plug it into the computer rather than wait for it to come from the satellite, we know that we will actually get 100% of the information. Which days the fish was in, which location, how deep it was, had it moved since the day before, all that kind of information which we just don't have at the moment.